Yo, man, what's the YouTube man? Show born by Kelness, aka Mr. Napier, born by that today, man. We are back with the young boy, real killer, fake gangster. This is part. Hold on, let me see. Let me see what part. Hold on. I'm trying to see what part this is. This is part six of the documentary. I think got parkour and drinks. I think you guys want to sit down and, and watch this documentary with me. Go ahead and get it to the come on. Secret. However, court documents would later reveal that Lit Yoshi was accused of performing a drive by on that street, with four people being hit by a shooter firing an assault rifle at them outside of a convenience store. But the really crazy thing is that after these two shootings, Yoshi would still evade arrest, and only a month after this alleged quadruple attempted murder, Lit Yoshi would then be connected to the shootout targeting young boy outside the Trump Hotel in Miami, with an innocent bystander unfortunately losing their life. However, thankfully, authorities would eventually put together their case and take Yoshi off the streets. Four months after the Trump Hotel shooting in September 2019, Yoshi would be rapping on the song Blasting, all about hitting people with bullets so hard they'll think they're 7.62s. Three months after that, in December 2019, he would be arrested by authorities in connection to the April 2019 quadruple shooting, as detectives revealed that both the 762 cartridge was apparently found at the scene and that the victim of the drive-by identified Yoshi as the shooter. With all of this evidence landing Lit Yoshi, real name Mayoshi Edwards, to eventually be charged with four counts of attempted murder over the incident, with police also claiming that ballistics proved that the same gun was used in the February 2019 shooting at the 3000 block of Crestwood Street, the known BBG house. The cops would describe Yoshi as a TBG enforcer, and even claim publicly that Yoshi was a suspect in numerous murders prior to these charges. But Damn, in an insane turn of fate, despite wow. the apparent danger that Lit Yoshi clearly posed to the community, Baton Rouge authorities did not keep him locked up, and within a week of the public learning of his arrest, Lit Yoshi was miraculously bailed out, to which he would celebrate by dropping a music video for a new song titled First Day Out. The music video starts with a menacing intro taken from a YouTube documentary, where a computer-generated voice lists the charges that Yoshi was arrested for, with this being followed by a real-life shot of him walking out of the same jail that Youngboy has walked out of so many times before. The song itself is mostly Yoshi taunting his ops, with some in incredibly incriminating lyrics given the charges, such as Yoshi telling the listeners how he still has the same Glock that made him drop, and how he still gets a drop on all the ops and continues Is that now self like snitching? He's saying he Bro, that's, that's crazy. Spinning their blocks. The brazenness of the song wasn't lost on the fans, who would clown him in the comments for self snitching, imagining his I'm lawyer saying, listening to the that. song and immediately having a heart attack. And despite the incredibly serious charges that Yoshi was facing, he would seemingly make no efforts to slow down or stop his street habits. However, while that Yoshi was causing chaos in Baton Rouge and finessing his way out of trouble, the deadly gang war would continue to play out in the streets. On the 22nd of March 2020, a shooting would occur at the family home of an NBA affiliate, 37 year old Travis Parker, known in the streets as T Baby or T Main who some have claimed was the brother-in-law of the late Big Dump, would be shot and killed in his home while a 62-year-old woman believed to be his mother would be wounded but fortunately survived. T-Baby was apparently a close friend of NBA 4K Trey affiliate YMM Captain and they had been seen pictured together in slime green bandanas. People on social media would identify their close friendship and work out that TBG rival Fredo Bang had seemingly been trolling Captain by liking his tribute post to T-Baby on Instagram. Unfortunately for Fredo That's Bang, crazy. exactly a week later, the tables would turn, and he would end up grieving the loss of his own friend. On Sunday, the 29th of mm. March, 2020, a man would- See how that works? See how karma works, bro? You see how like, stuff like that, like, it can happen to you too, man. Hey, but I repeat all the victims in, in this- in this documentary that we watched so far, y'all. ...was found shot to dead in front of a food mart in Baton Rouge. Police would reveal the name of the deceased man as 36-year-old Jason Nixon, with a gun violence memorial website confirming that he was a TBG affiliate who went by the name Dutch. Dutch was apparently an older and well-respected member of TBG, and he could often be seen hanging around other TBG artists like Fredo Bang, Lit Yoshi, and Boulevard Sleepy, including appearing in the music video for Lit Yoshi's song First Day Out, and TBG members would seemingly turn huh? out to show 
love at his funeral. TBG rapper Seven Hardaway was a close friend of TBG Dutch, and he mourned the death of his friend by posting a photo of him on his IG story, along with the ominous song War Baby by Roddy Rich, a track which discusses the trauma of growing up in a war zone where you have to slide on the sliders. Then, a few months later, Hardaway would release a heartfelt song titled Pain, where he reminisces all about his fallen friends, including TBG Dutch. But while TBG affiliates were posting tributes to Dutch, NBA and 4K Trey affiliates were seemingly dissing him, with Baby Joe making an Instagram story making fun of TBG members whose feelings would have been hurt over Dutch's death. Also in March 2020, Lit Yoshi and NBA Michi Baby would go back and forth on social media, after it was rumoured that Michi had been a target of one of Yoshi's shootings and was potentially planning to testify. Fredo Bang and Yoshi what? would post an image to Instagram apparently showing a Wait, so NBA Michi Baby was going to snitch on, on Yoshi? On Yoshi? That is true. That is crazy. That is crazy, man. Letter that Michi had received from the authorities, informing him that he was formally listed as a victim in a shooting case and that he would need to go to court and appear as a witness. However, this letter didn't have any kind of indication that he was a cooperating witness, and it seems to me, simply put, that the feds identified him as being shot or being shot at and are simply hoping that he will turn up to court and give evidence, with Michi taking to IG himself to claim that he did receive a letter from the cops but that he had no intention of taking the stand and that the letter wasn't even addressed to him personally. Stupid. Y'all better go read that fucking paper. I don't f got told on somebody. Stupid is lit. The fuck are you? The paper is on Instagram. Read the fucking paper. Stupid. The fuck got told on my. You don't see no statement with Lawrence Wilson back. Ain't my fucking name. And ain't my fucking address. So stupid. That was sound me too. Bitch, read the. Them turn y'all. This boy. Turn. Let's turn. Read. What is that? I told on. Oh bitch, they was me up. It's the piece of paper. Didn't say then then flow. Huh? Big dog, man. Hey, that's say then then flow. He would go on to admit that Yoshi did shoot at him and that the cops took him to jail and then sent him the letter. Sat in me and the people wanted they sent a piece of paper to my house. They sent a piece of paper to my house. They shot at me, I ain't leave that. The police pull up, I went to jail at night and everything, man. Stop playing with me, man. However, that didn't stop Yoshi, who would continue to... Hey, man, I'm sorry, I'm pausing it. My fault, I won't pause it, I won't pause it, my fault. ...Mark Michi on Instagram, even tagging him directly in a post, asking him not to come to court on him. And he would also post another story <clears throat> calling Michi an informant just because he received that letter and saying that they have no evidence on Yoshi. And that he's being taken to court purely because of Michi's statement and suggesting that Michi did this to get off probation himself. Get on here, talk about some fake. Yeah, stop playing. That's that's the paper that came to your front door. Land. MBA Michi is a rant. You heard what I said? That ain't the paperwork saying exactly what he said, but that's the paperwork saying that you's a victim. You said something and they need you to back up on my court date because they don't have nothing on me. You know what I'm saying? They only got probation for five years, 10 years in jail if you get caught with a gun. You, you just got out, mm. you swapped me out, huh? Yeah, you made a deal with the people and swapped me out for your probation, huh? Now, Michi would continue to deny what? that he was a snitch, calling out Yoshi for attention seeking. Fortunately for Yoshi, these statements would come back to haunt him. But even with all of this attention around the situation, he would allegedly continue to slide in the streets and shoot at his ops only a couple of weeks later. A week after the murder of TBG Dutch, on the 6th of April 2020, two masked men were caught on security camera footage shooting at somebody in a parking lot of an apartment complex in East Baton Rouge. While the intended target of the shooters is off screen, the camera would capture the frightful moments of an innocent bystander sitting in their car getting caught in the crossfire. One of the shooters would later turn out to be Lit Yoshi. In fact, he would appear in a social media post Man, like, bro. He rapping and he's, he was still living that street life, man. That's... That's crazy, y'all. Post along with Seven Hardaway wearing the exact same outfit from the shooting surveillance footage. A black no, Night Tech crazy. hoodie and grey sweats. Crazy. While Seven Hardaway would be wearing a different hoodie, but it is clear that he also matches the build of the other shooter in the footage. This was seemingly a post laughing about the shooting incident and tagging Fredo Bang, letting him know that they were in a good mood after carrying out the shooting. One of the targets of this incident was later revealed to have been the NBA affiliate who was later convicted in connection to the murder of G-Money, NBA Lil Pap, 
aka DeAndre Fields, and the other target of the shooting would seemingly be Michi Baby, with later court documents pointing mm -hmm. out that Yoshi had quite literally tried to kill the same man that he was just calling a snitch a month before on social media, which would leave one to believe that Yoshi was actively attempting to kill the witness slash victim of the previous shooting, all in an attempt to beat that charge. But ironically, that he would now crazy. be on the hook for yet another crime. And it was only 10 days after that alleged shooting that Yoshi would make yet another IG Live where he accused NBA members of snitching on him and FL Dusa. I don't wanna go to jail. The boys free Dusa. Dusa already doing five years with him. I don't wanna go to jail. I don't want no smoke, no BBG. I order my boys. So y'all stop saying that like I'm beefing with them boys. I'm not. I don't want no smoke with none of them. I'm scared of them. They're in your, they're in your life. They're how you face some time. Get them boys. Get my boys. I love them. I don't want no beef with them. Somebody died a whole city of rip on one body. That's crazy. How if someone somebody died, the whole city will get on Instagram and rip on it. And ain't got nothing to do with it. These crazy. These better start sliding for their own people that's dead. Or people who still are on my list. Dusa was still sitting in jail during this time, but even behind bars, he was still stoking the conflict and dropping jail freestyles threatening his ops, and seemingly alluding to that incident back in 2016 where an NBA member got shot in the neck when Youngboy and others had tried to slide on them following the death of Boozilla. Meanwhile, on the streets, despite being firmly in the crosshairs of law enforcement, Lit Yoshi would continue to allegedly be involved in shootouts, this time on the 4th of July in one of the most reckless incidents seen in this story. Police would respond to a drive-by shooting on the 11300 block of Greenwell Springs Road, which had apparently targeted a car in which two adults and two children were inside. All four passengers in the vehicle would end up in hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. But the police would soon have a breakthrough, linking the rental car used in both the April and July 2020 shootings to Lit Yoshi's girlfriend, who had rented it in her real name. Yoshi would be the subject of a search warrant, with cops finding an assault rifle in his car that matched the crime scene's ballistics. Detectives also found a pair of shoes at Yoshi's apartment that were used by one of the shooters in the April shooting that was all caught on camera. Yoshi's arrest would make the local news as soon as cops took him into custody. A man is behind bars tonight after police connected him to a shooting on Greenwell Springs Road that happened over the weekend. And video surveillance linked Mayoshi Edwards to that shooting. Hey. Two children and two hey. adults were shot when a car pulled next to theirs and began shooting. When police took Edwards into custody, the, they actually realized he, he had an active arrest warrant Hold for a shooting that happened back in April that sent one person to the hospital. Edwards is now charged with seven counts of attempted first degree murder, among other charges. So hmm? Lit Yoshi would be facing a whopping seven attempted murder charges on the 9th of July 2020. But in an absolutely insane move by the Baton Rouge judiciary, he would be given bail once again just a day later, with a $1.16 million dollar bond being set, ironically, oh, by the very same how... judge who kept on giving mm -hmm. young boy chances in his attempted murder case. That's how you know them people, they want the money, bro. That's how you know they want money, bro. But hey, maybe she was a TBG fan too. But anyway, eventually it would appear as if sense prevailed in the courtrooms of Baton Rouge, because after this, another judge stepped in to place a bond hold on Yoshi with all of his shooting cases being combined and handed to yet another judge who set Yoshi a combined bond price of 1.82 million. But this still gave him the option to bond out, apparently with the option to go on house arrest in another state, Florida, where he would still be allowed to make music. However, Yoshi would be banned from making social media postings, and this is perhaps why we heard very little from Yoshi publicly during this time. But it did seem like he was indeed able to bond out and go to Florida as planned, filing a not guilty plea on August the 3rd, 2020, with his family apparently putting up the $1.82 million bond that he, he would need to be released 
as he told the court he was indeed Colorado moving to Florida. Somewhere. While Yoshi was in the midst of his legal battles, young boy and Fredo Bang would continue to go back and forth on social media. On July the 20th, they would both post videos showing that they're outside, with Fredo driving around, possibly in Baton Rouge, along with his fellow TBG rapper Seven Hardaway and the rest of the TBG posse, telling the camera how his ops aren't in their own hood. We on location. With young boy replying with a story of his own, speeding in a car and telling the ops they need to catch him if they want to assassinate him. I love being rich. You gotta come catch me to assassinate me with your scary. The following month, in August 2020, Fredo Bang and Youngboy would go back and forth on social media yet again, as Fredo was teasing his upcoming album titled In the Name of G, a tribute to his fallen TBG friend G Money. It would soon emerge that Fredo was eyeing a September the 11th release date for the project. This, unfortunately, would also be the intended release date of Youngboy's upcoming project, Top. Fredo would post on his Instagram story, saying how it seems that they'll be both dropping their albums on the same day and calling Youngboy his son, to which Youngboy would reply with a furious video rant, along with a caption telling Fredo that he's going to catch him and shoot him, and even going as far as to tell Fredo he's not a killer and that he should go and dig all three of his dead friends up, a reference to the mm. deaths of G Money, Boulevard Quick, and TBG Dutch. Youngboy would also say that he's not in competition with Fredo and that Fredo wants to do everything he does, even bizarrely accusing Fredo Bang of wanting to be just like Youngboy and trying to smash every girl that Youngboy smashes, and strangely saying that if he smashed Fredo's mum, Fredo would probably try and do it too. Hey, hey, you a what? bum, you what? Hey, go dig all three of your brothers up with your scary ass. You a stop running from me. I ain't in no competition with you. Stop writing me. You a killer you won't be like me you write me all day you are and i could double back hey i could f any you gonna try to double back and f the i could f your mama you gonna try to f your mama you will f you a pimp Fredo would soon reply with his own video, where it's he would act much they used more to be calm cool and collected like Youngboy, telling viewers to go crazy, and help bro. Youngboy with his anger issues. Fredo would then diss Youngboy's fallen friend Dump, making fun of his weight and his death, saying that he needed an extra large coffin, as well as mocking NBA member KD, who had reportedly become paralyzed after what? being shot in yet another shooting in April 2019, a fact which is apparently a closely guarded secret in the NBA camp. Man, somebody go help the brother out, bro. He angry, dog. He angry. Talking about dead patterns and shit. Like I'm only yeah. talking about fat boy in that extra extra large coffin he got. That you hear crazy. me? Or 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 Professor X how he got push his half dead around. I don't, I'm not on this talking about that. I, I said I was sell more albums. Yeah, you drop it, it's how my fucking drop. Fredo would also address Youngboy's claim that he tries to smash all of his girls by saying it's not his fault that the girls sent him DMs. Then you mad about a it ain't my fault all your bitch me and my DM. We share two now now all of a sudden I'm just fing everything you not playing, man. Meanwhile, even with TBG's main shooter, Yo, Lil Yoshi, exiled to house arrest in Florida, NBA members would still live in constant danger in Baton Rouge, and there would be back-to-back -back shootings in November. At around 7pm on the 20th of November 2020, Baton Rouge police arrived to the racetrack gas station at the 8000 block of Airline Highway, amid reports of a shooting nearby. Cops would find two people yeah, shot at that gas station, with one person station, surviving, man. but the other person passing away en route to hospital. It's unclear if this incident was related to the rap feud in Baton Rouge, but what happened next absolutely was. The following day, at around 11.30pm on November the 21st, 2020, at the Z Quick Mart gas station store on Hooper, Baton Rouge police would report a shooting where the victim had returned gunfire and survived, with fans capturing a heavy police presence at the location immediately after reports. Over the following days, hip-hop news media would report the shooting of a prominent NBA member, Big B, and it would later be reported that Big B was in the hospital after taking a shot to the leg. And after some time, he would begin to be seen on social media showing off his injuries and mobility aids, even posting a picture to Instagram supposedly at the Z Quickmark gas station, pump number 8, where he was apparently found after being shot. Interestingly, after the yeah. shooting, reports would also circulate suggesting that the person who shot him was now dead. However, it was unclear exactly who this supposed deceased shooter was. It seemed logical that perhaps what? the man at the scene who was shot when Big B was returning fire was the original shooter who may have been hit. Conversely, according to one wild fan theory, an apparent revenge attack had happened all the way in Houston, citing a double shooting at a North Houston what? motel, the Green Chase Inn, on November the 21st, it's where like a man was found dead. States. That would turn out to be false, however, as that man oh, was no, found no. dead at 9pm the same night 
three and a half hours before Big B was actually shot. I actually believe that people are confusing the November the 20th gas station shooting the day before Big B got shot, which as far as I'm aware is completely unrelated to the Big B situation and actually was related to a home invasion where somebody got killed in self-defense. Also not related to this incident. And Big B himself would even come out to deny having killed the person who shot him in a Fuchsia's TV interview. You got shot in your leg, right? Yeah. Gas station. And I, I was doing my research. It said that the, the, I guess the person that, uh, that shot at you or something, that he died. Is that true? Nah, but people, they just making stories and all kinds of shit. Mm -hmm. Regardless of whether or not revenge was carried out, mm. this was clearly a major incident that affected the NBA camp, and this incident would soon make its way to music. Later on, in the song Soul Snatchers that was released in June 2022, Big B raps how he didn't have time to aim, but still shot back when he was shot at, which many people believe is a reference to this incident. Youngboy would also rap in his song Lost Soul Survivor, released in August 2020, how someone shot his brother five times, but he didn't die, and in fact shot back. Only a few weeks after Big B getting shot, in December 2020, TBG rapper Seven Hardaway would come out with a diss track titled Treason, seemingly aimed at NBA and specifically Youngboy himself. Hardaway begins the song by rapping about Youngboy's early days and how he used to coach him when Youngboy was still friendly with TBG. Then he expresses his disappointment at Youngboy's beefs with Floyd Mayweather and Jay Prince, calling him stupid and illiterate, while also telling how NBA are always dissing TBG but are hiding when Hardaway and Lit Yoshi come out into the streets, and going on later in the song to diss Youngboy's use of autotune, a lack of street cred, and his hunger for clout. Meanwhile, back in Miami, videos of Lit Yoshi enjoying life on house arrest would eventually make their way to vlogs on his YouTube channel, documenting the months that he spent on house arrest, where he would openly shout out his gang as he prepared to spend big money on his case and telling the world that house arrest ain't stopping anything. TVG Gorilla Gang, bang beers. Court the day is up at the court. I should be hearing good news. We got the cracks. They think I'm broke, man. The house rest shit ain't stopping. Boy. And clearly, Lit Yoshi had become a big fan of Chicago rappers hey. King Von and Lil Durk, rapping some of Von's most violent lyrics whilst walking around his house. Now that is, that is crazy. He's cool with Durk, he was cool with Durk. Oh my, nah, it's crazy. Of course, no beef. And, 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 and isn't Fredo being cool with Durk and them? We ain't to it till you yeah. die, real street. At your funeral, I might just slide, rest in peace. You know I know. My life, the and also singing along to Lil Durk lyrics about shootings on the way to court. Yoshi's vlog would show him preparing for court, with him apparently highly confident of the judge giving him even more freedoms, telling viewers how he had been on his best behavior for about three months now and complaining that staying in the house doesn't fit him as he likes to move around. TBG Gorilla Gang, gonna go to court. Everything should be looking good, boy. Pop in that form. I ain't worried about nothing in my city. I've been good for three months, baby. They gotta let me do something. Been killing me, boy. I've been I've been stuck in the house two and a half months, man. I couldn't even leave out that. That ain't yo yo, boy. Y'all know yo yo like to move around, bro. Yoshi would be boastful about getting out on bail during this time, claiming that he felt like a free man already, and that the judge just needed to put the icing on the cake. Yeah, man, it feel good to ride back around, man. I feel, I feel like a free man again. All I need is the judge to put the icing on the cake, baby. Hear him sorry, eat my cake like anime. Now. This bravado turned out to be misplaced, as it would turn out that at this hearing in November 2020, the judge actually admonished Yoshi for having too much fun on bail, even going as far as to claim that he was treating his house arrest as a paid vacation since Yoshi was amongst friends, having fun, and making music. With the district attorney complaining that Yoshi was violating curfew by moving around Miami late at night on jet skis and relaxing on the beach. As a punishment, his curfew was extended from starting from 8 p.m. to starting at 6 p.m. and running to 6 a.m. the next day, and telling him specifically no more jet skis or visits to glitzy Miami beauty spots like Biscayne Bay and South Beach. And even in his vlog, we would soon see a stressed out Yoshi after court where he claimed that they tried to keep him locked up in court and that his situation might not be improving. I almost sent my back to jail. What? I, that, talk, just talking about stupid misunderstood in last coordination. Man, boy, I thought I wasn't about to leave out that and I, I still can't do nothing though. I still can't do nothing. They had me in that field about four hours. These, I thought I wasn't coming out that I thought they was talking. thought everything was going to go better than what it would, did, but it didn't. 
<sighs> Sit back again. Yoshi would even open up, saying that prosecutors had actively tried to completely revoke his bond, with fellow TBG rapper Seven Hardaway trying to put a positive spin on things, saying that that's not a problem because they got money and they could put up another $2 million bail. They're trying to revoke my bond. I ain't even get a chance to talk about me back working. You hear me? Look, they try to revoke my partner bond, but so we got money. On a strict house arrest, so, you know, look. <laughs> I don't know what two million dollar bun. Which I want another two million? Ain't no money. After being briefly humbled by what? almost losing his house arrest privileges, in time, Yoshi would revert back to his cocky attitude, perhaps as a result of that big stack of money truly going to his head. Yoshi would continue to record and release music during this stint on house arrest, with lyrics giving us a peek into his mental state during this period. In the song Get Back, released late in December 2020, Yoshi showed no signs of giving up his violent lifestyle, a track coming laced with pointed lyrics about dead op boys and taunting his ops, asking what they're gonna do about it. It. An insane lyric when you consider the fact that this guy seems to repeatedly target his ops with no care to the innocent people or children who get in the way, and the police just can't seem to keep him behind bars. In the song Bust Down, released 5th of February 2021, Yoshi tells how some of his friends did him wrong during his house arrest, rapping that some of them <gasps> thought it was over for him but they got it wrong because he's still making lots of money on house arrest. He also threatens to put a $10,000 bounty on someone's head, just like he did to their brother. Ironically, it would seem that around the times Yoshi would be at his most brazen, the courts would deliver bad news in his case. 20 days after that song about putting money on people's heads, the judge in his upcoming case would deliver yet another devastating blow to his defense by ruling that the jury would be allowed to hear evidence about his alleged involvement in the Miami Hotel incident that targeted Youngboy in 2019. And this announcement would come with numerous revelations that spelled disaster for Yoshi's case. Allegedly, phone records from the time of the shooting in Miami gave investigators lit Yoshi's approximate cell phone location, which turned out to be on the same street as the Trump Hotel where Youngboy was shot and an innocent man died. In fact, uh -oh. Yoshi was allegedly on the phone to an unspecified incarcerated TBG member who was in jail while at the location of the shooting. Not only that, but prosecutors would also use his Instagram lives against him, where he had publicly claimed that NBA members had ratted on him in the June 2019 drive-by shooting case. But even more crazy than that is the fact that in spite of all of the mounting evidence against him, Yoshi would continue dropping music that continued to incriminate him. In his song Together, released on July the 16th, 2021, Yoshi would take the self-incrimination to a whole new level, rapping that his ops are going to die together and alluding to doing a drive-by shooting, saying that he will pull up oh, next like, to his ops. you're trying to get off house first, why are you, like... Car yeah. and try and make them fly. Yeah. Even going as far as to say he doesn't care if his ops are with their families, he will shoot them wherever. Yoshi also raps about catching someone slipping and shooting him and then killing a couple more people. Outrageous yeah. lyrics when you consider the fact that at the time this released, he was on house arrest for numerous shootings, including a car to car drive by that targeted a family with two children in the car. Ultimately, it would seem that finally the judge, prosecutors, and police had eventually seen enough. And Yoshi's stint on house arrest in his plush South Florida home would come to an end on the 22nd of July 2021. While Lit Yoshi was staying at TBG label mate Fredo Bang's house, federal agents would suddenly burst in using smoke bombs, assault rifles, and tactical gear, with cops presenting outstanding warrants in Baton Rouge for both Fredo Bang and Lit Yoshi, arresting them both. This would apparently be the result of probation violations, as the terms of Yoshi's release stated that he wasn't allowed to appear in music videos, post on social media, or possess firearms. And Fredo Bang was also on probation for pleading guilty to a weapon charge relating to a 2015 shooting in Baton Rouge. Unfortunately for Fredo still... Bang, during the raid, so guns were also found inside his home along with a stolen car parked outside, and like the presence of these firearms would mean big trouble for Yoshi too. Just days after the raid, authorities would announce that they were adding another attempted murder charge to his case, the April 2020 shooting where he had allegedly tried to kill NBA Pap and NBA Michi Baby the month after accusing him of snitching on him. Things had turned for Yoshi, and it would only get worse from here. His bond was officially revoked by a Baton Rouge judge on September the 9th, 2021, with federal agents who conducted the raid testifying that five guns, ammunition, and a bulletproof vest had all been found in Fredo's house while Yoshi was there. And Yoshi's March 2020 social media posts calling the victims of one of these shootings NBA Michi a snitch was also used against him. This was a dumb move, because calling the victim a snitch publicly is basically an admission that you in fact 
fact did the crime. But even in light of all true. of this damning evidence, Yoshi's team were apparently working on a strategy of trying to finesse him out of jail on bail once again. But that plan would ultimately fall flat when it was revealed in court that Yoshi's DNA was found on a gun that was recovered in the July raid. Apparently this DNA evidence would link Yoshi directly to the shootings that he was being investigated for, which meant that he would have absolutely no chance of making bail again and meaning that he'd be sat behind bars awaiting trial rather than living it up in Miami. Eventually, in July 2022, Lit Yoshi mm. pleaded guilty to charges connected to two shootings in 2019 and 2020. And as a result, Yoshi was sentenced to face 15 years in prison at a hard labor facility, followed by three years of active parole. Funnily enough, though, a month mm. later, Yoshi would claim to have been tricked by prosecutors and years? launched a bid to change his plea from guilty back to not guilty, arguing that his lawyer never told him that he would get 15 years for accepting the guilty plea, suggesting that he was only expecting to get six and a half, even claiming that during negotiations, his lawyer had actually been suspended from practicing law. It was a long shot, but it was the best that Yoshi could hope for. And while things were getting very serious for Yoshi behind bars, Hardaway was still upping the ante on the war back in Baton Rouge. In August 2022, he released an EP titled Transition, where he would take numerous shots against Youngboy, NBA, and 4K Trey. In the song Sinister, Hardaway disses Youngboy, saying that while his albums are going number one, his friends back in Baton Rouge are getting killed. After hearing about these lyrics, Big B would actually comment, who died? insinuating that nobody from their side had been killed recently. The following month, unfortunately, someone would indeed lose their life, but it wouldn't be an NBA member. Because on the night of Tuesday, the 20th of September, 2022, at around 8 p.m., Seven Hardaway, real name Stanley Wright, was Yo, bro, this is crazy, bro. It's like they be... Started with G money. Started with the bill of the Boulevard. What's the dude's name? Every time when somebody they're close to goes to prison, it's like they, it's like they just they get killed, bros. Crazy. was in the parking lot of the building where he lived, the Sherwood Place apartment complex in Baton Rouge. Here, he was approached by unknown assailants who shot him from close range, leaving him on the pavement where he would ultimately lose his life, mm. being laid to rest just days later where he would be seen surrounded by TBG members. Police were quick to determine that this homicide was gang-related and specifically targeted Seven for his affiliations to TBG and connection to Lit Yoshi. With that in mind, it was no surprise what happened next. TBG's enemies would soon begin commenting on Hardaway's death on social media. 4K Trey affiliates would be seen on IG Live laughing and saying that they were smoking on number seven. We got him lagging. Do I pay? What do I pay? Been on a dead, not a talking to him. You got a chance to say it to their face. Say it with your chest. Huh? They was dissing on a. And of course, his friends would make posts hinting at future get back. However, despite being quick to determine the death of Hardaway as gang-related, the Baton Rouge police once again have struggled to find the killer, making his death yet another devastating statistic of Baton Rouge's out-of-control gang war. And speaking of numbers, back in prison, the last-minute attempt to backtrack on his guilty plea proved to be an enormous failure for Lit Yoshi. And in May 2023, Yoshi's bid to change his plea was officially rejected leaving him set to serve the full 15 years of hard labor, essentially leaving the streets of Baton Rouge and Miami for the next 15 years just a little bit safer for adults and children alike. I think it's important here just to reiterate That's the not fact gonna stop that there is anything, nothing glamorous it's, it's gonna about keep this gang-banging going, 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 Lit Yoshi it's never gonna stop. for what he deserved. He was a man who just... The only way this gang, the only way this shooting stuff is, is gonna stop if people just, if they just come to, if they just come together and make like, that's all you have to do, bro, but they're not gonna do that. Despite having a musical talent, was primarily focused on continuing this gang war and shooting at his rivals. He had no remorse for the innocent men, women, or children who got in the way. And he's frankly a deplorable human being who absolutely deserves to be taken off the streets for 15 years because of the things he did. But that doesn't mean that his ops aren't without blame either. But there's no way of looking at it. Lit Yoshi was clearly a danger to society and absolutely should have been put away sooner. However, his absence from the gang war wouldn't mean bliss or safety for Baton Rouge's most famous rap crew. That's what I'm saying. Back, it would be the very this opposite, stop. as while TBG's most feared shooter was finally facing the legal repercussions of his reckless actions, a whole other group of reckless gangsters from Chicago would soon enter the picture, starting a beef uh -oh. with Youngboy that he never even wanted to be part of. But in this case, this beef was very personal, because it involved the mother of one of Youngboy's many children, and ultimately would wind up becoming another deadly feud that would claim the lives old. of people on both sides. It's 
it's always over a female, bro. Every time people, some people, somebody beef or something like that, it's always, always, always it's always over a female, bro. It's, that cannot happen, bro. We, we, we should, come on, bro. Come on, man. Despite his turbulent life in the streets, family has always been important to young boy. Despite growing up with an unstable home life, he always found friends to call his brothers and older figures to nurture him, whether his biological mother Sharonda, his grandmother who raised him like a mother, or his best friend OG3's mother who took him in as one of her own. With that in mind, it's no surprise that since becoming a father at the young age of 16, young boy has taken his family obligations very seriously. And let me tell you, it's ended up being one big family. Despite his young age, young boy has had quite the love life. And at the age of 23, he has 11 children at the age of 23. That is bro, what? He has been reported as having as many as 11 children. However, that might not be entirely accurate. So I actually did a full breakdown on young boy's family tree, his dating history and the timeline of when he had all of his children. But once again, I- Misha is Kaden. 2017. Oh, this is K3. Oh, Casey. Dania. Okay. Didn't he, didn't he have one recently? Yeah, right here. Jasmine. Yep, her name, Jasmine. I didn't That's have enough time in this YouTube version to fit it all yeah, in. So one. if you want to see that, check out the uncut version of the video on Patreon or the extended version of this chapter that's going to go up on my third channel, Trap Law Clips, soon. All in all, Youngboy's relationship history has been a roller coaster ride that has left him with a large family of at least 10 biological children to eight different baby mothers. Youngboy's enormous family would provide him with many blessings mm. and a lot of love at home, but it would also leave him with a lot of vulnerabilities to his enemies. With so many people to look after and look out for, it wouldn't be surprising that his opposition might try and use some of those closest to him to attack him. Ultimately, it was one particular relationship that would end up forever altering yeah. not just the lives of young yeah. boy and his partners, but also the lives of the people around him, with one of the mothers of his children ultimately ending up being used as a pawn in a rap beef between young boy and Chicago drill rapper King Von, with Jania's involvement in the beef yeah. being the first escalation in a series of There's unfortunate no events, it, which would ultimately end if, in if numerous that, people if, losing. If that, if that never happened, I feel like Von, like the, the OTS side and the in the in the in the in the in the NBA side, they'll be called each other, bro. To be honest, in their lives, in front of millions of people. That's the king. I be king Von, man. I'd if you watch my recent video, that, King Von raps first serial killer. Serial killer then you'll already know about the dark past of Chicago rapper King Von. But in case you didn't, let me get you up to speed. King Von is a rapper hailing from Chicago. Yeah, More Chicago, specifically, yes, we know the Parkway Gardens housing Oblock, projects, yes, better known yes, yes. as Oblock. This yes, housing development know, is famous for its association with the pioneer of Chicago drill music, Chief yes, yes, the teenage know. rap phenomenon who brought Chicago drill music to the mainstream of rap. With his raps all about the violent gang wars playing out in Chicago, giving many all over the world their first look at gang life in America's most dangerous city. But back in 2012, when Chief Keef was making music all about the gang wars in his city, King Von was really living those lyrics. Von was a prominent member of the Black Disciples street gang, specifically the set hailing from O Block. Hey, yeah, uh, I know I'm probably so much, but do you guys see? Do you guys see how close they are from each other, bro? Look, they're right here. Right here. And SLEBT is this whole block. Old block, like, there's the thing, it didn't like the old block right here, but look. Like, their whole, like, block or whatever they claim it is, it's not, it's not even that huge. Like, pause. Like, look. Look how small it is. Look how, like, SC, SCLEBT, like, look. It's a lot of turf compared to this. And then, and then you got right here, and then, and then you get, you get to worry about the other little clicks. The, little, the other little sets are around them. That's who were engaged in a bitter war with their rivals, a group of gangster disciples from 63rd. In my previous video about King Von, I reviewed King Von's rumored involvement in as many as seven gang-related murders between 2012 and 2014. And I made the argument that he is in fact a serial killer by FBI's own definition of the term, due to the fact that he appeared to claim responsibility for more than three murders with more than a month's time span between them. But it wasn't just that that I believe made Von a serial killer. It's the fact that even after beating 
beating a murder charge in 2017, he would be released from jail, at which point he would partner with his childhood friend and prominent Chicago drill rapper Lil Durk, launching his very own rap career. Not only using his music to boast about and drop clues concerning the at least seven murders he was associated with, but he would allegedly use the money he made rapping about these murders to continue to have people killed. With Von taking that, a great man. deal of personal gratification from being known all over the world for getting away with this series of gruesome murders. And with his jaw-dropping raps all about specific murders that he had been associated with over the years, rap and true crime fans all over the world flocked to Von's music, with intense debate taking place over whether or not he truly was the multiple murderer he claimed to be in his songs. Over the course of 2019 and 2020, King Von would release a string of well-received songs that made him an infamous figure in the rap world, most notably his Crazy Story oh, yeah, series crazy of songs story. where he used lyrics to tell a vivid story of life in the streets, all about his attempts to rob people, getting in shootouts, and using women to set up his ops to get killed. One of Von's biggest career moments came in 2020, That's when he released his yeah. song Took Her to the O. This storytelling song painted a picture of Von using a woman to set up and kill real-life rival rapper of his, FBG Duck. The music video would even what? depict Von shooting FBG Duck and leaving him dead on the ground. Then, in an eerie turn of events, the real-life FBG Duck would be shot dead in the middle of a busy Chicago street by a gang of masked men only months after this video was released. Yeah, it's, it's, Took Her to the O would become one of King Von's biggest hits, sitting in a catalogue of other big songs and features with millions of views and streams. By mid-2020, King Von was a multi-millionaire rapper with a bright future and one of the biggest buzzes in the rap game. But behind the scenes, there was seemingly tension brewing between him and Youngboy who at the time, in mid-2020, was the undisputed king of street rap, having dropped a string of chart-topping projects. Now, it's unclear exactly where the beef between Von and Youngboy's crew started, but it likely all had something to do with Von's friend and mentor, Chicago rapper Lil Durk. Lil Durk Wait, and Youngboy you actually Durk, collaborated man? on a November 2017 track called My Side, and it's believed that Lil Durk had even tried to sign Youngboy back in 2017, with this being revealed on the intro to Youngboy's song GG on AI Youngboy, where he raps, Tell OTF I do not sign NBA that be my gang. As we now know, Youngboy went on to sign a lucrative multi-million hey, dollar deal with Atlantic. Youngboy Ultimately son, signing to Lil Durk, let's face it, 2017 would not have been a great career. At that point, while crazy. he was a respected artist in the streets of Chicago, Lil Durk's biggest career achievement was his 2015 Remember My Name album, which peaked at 14 on the Billboard Albums chart. Lil Durk had never had a song on the charts at this point, and by the end of 2017, Youngboy had surpassed Dirk's chart record with three songs on the Billboard Hot 100 and three projects on Billboard's 200 albums charts. In many ways, Youngboy dodged a bullet by not signing with Dirk and quickly surpassed him in every way. Lil Dirk's career was essentially floundering until King Von came out of jail and re-energized him. Dirk's only song on Billboard before 2020 was an appearance on a 2018 Lil Baby and Gunna track off White Velo. But by the end of 2019, Lil Dirk had had seven projects land on the Billboard 200 albums charts. But in the time since turning Dirk's offer down, Youngboy had amassed 17 songs charting on the Billboard Hot 100 and 13 projects charting on Billboard's 200 albums chart. While Youngboy had seemingly turned down the chance to align himself with Dirk and his OTF collective, he had built up a legacy in his own right, and at this point, there was seemingly no beef with them. In 2018, Lil Dirk would be seen popping up in an IG Live with Youngboy, where things seemed cool between them. Also in 2018, Lil Dirk would continue his hunt for other up-and-coming street rappers to align himself with and potentially sign to his label. Another up-and-comer that Lil Dirk discovered early was Savannah Street superstar Quando Rondo, who after blowing up with his track I Remember, featuring Atlanta legend and close friend of Lil Dirk's Lil Baby, would go on to collaborate with Dirk on the song Other Side, which appeared on Quando's first commercial mixtape, Life Before Fame. In fact, Quando and his team were clearly big fans of Dirk, with Quando's cousin and close friend Lil Pab tweeting his love of Lil Dirk's song This Ain't What You Want way back in 2013, saying that this song is better than everything. After the success yeah. of his first major single and mixtape, the rap industry was buzzing around Quando Rondo, and there would be intense competition between labels trying to sign him. But he would eventually catch the attention of fellow singing gangster rapper Youngboy, who commented on his video asking Quando for his number. And he commented on the video and wanted my number and stuff. Youngboy and Quando would connect and hit it off behind the scenes. And in June 2018, Quando would officially sign to Youngboy's label, Never Broke Again, announcing it to Instagram with a post attracting congratulatory replies from NBA heavy hitters. And days later, Quando would be seen on stage with Youngboy and the NBA crew, where he received his NBA chain from OG3 and throws up Rollin' 60 Crip gang signs for the crowd. Never broke again, oh! Yeah. Stop playing like a game, game now. 
Everybody say NBA ain't never broke again. One, two, three. NBA never broke again. Neighborhood. I appreciate that, man. He said neighborhood. Neighborhood. Put that on right quick. You know neighborhood. Hey, say three. Make, Hold up. Make sure you bang on them before you walk off oh, the stage. Oh, I got them for the bang. You mind about why I right quick though? Bang, I think you got the crowd saying that it's crazy. Hold on, hold on, I gotta get this on camera. Everybody gotta scream neighborhood one time, one time. Yo, what? on the count of three, everybody scream neighborhood. One, two, three. Eventually, Quando ended up appearing on three of four tracks on Young Boy's four tracks for loyalty. However, once again, despite how things played out, it didn't seem from the outset that there was any kind of tension between Dirk, Young Boy, and Quando. Dirk would even name Quando as one of the artists he was spending a lot of time in the studio with in a 2018 Double XL interview. Funnily enough, Quando also shouted out Lil Dirk in two tracks on his 2019 mixtape from the neighborhood to the stage. Rapping in Dope Boy Dreams that he signed to the streets three times, he feels like Dirk, referencing Lil Dirk signed to the Streets mixtape series, and rapping on the song My Section that Dirk had told him to treat the rap game like the drug game. Perhaps an indication that Dirk had been giving Quando advice on how to navigate the industry before he signed to NBA. At the end of March 2019, Quando would actually be seen backstage with Lil Dirk's newest artist, King Von, wearing a matching outfit and hyping King Von up by dissing his ops from 63rd in Chicago. I'm saying no 63rd dirty <laughs> In August 2019, Lil Durk puts out a list of his 50 greatest rappers, and both Youngboy and Quando Rondo are on that list. Durk would caption that image, saying that these rappers are people that changed the culture. And I would argue in many ways that Lil Durk was clearly inspired by Quando and Youngboy's style of gangster pain music. And arguably, Durk's career revival in 2019 and 2020 was helped massively by the popularity of the type of auto-tuned gangster rap singing that Youngboy was most known for. Durk and Quando would seemingly remain friends into the start of 2020, with Dirk even appearing on Quando's song, Safest, even shouting him out as one of his favorite rappers. However, it would seem that somewhere in 2020, things would change, and that would all have something to do with King Von. Despite playing nice backstage with yeah, Quando in March 2019, oh. a month before, King Von appeared to diss Youngboy in front of a fan on IG Live. I Von would continue to disrespect Youngboy publicly following this. A month later, in March, taking to social media to say that Youngboy's music is full of lies and that he's not a real gangster like he says he is in his music. Youngboy talking about on this song, bro. What? You talking crazy on this man. Oh yeah. He ain't in life though. Oh. On his <laughs> cap. You got cap in your raps. Remember that. Those street boss don't hit the white lady. You got cap in your hey. raps. Now this is interesting because it says to me that perhaps Von's problem with Youngboy is that he felt he wasn't worthy of his reputation. We've already discussed Youngboy's numerous lyrics over the years where he appears to infer that he's killed over seven people. However, this supposed body count has been heavily doubted and debated, with it really being believed that when Youngboy says he has bodies, he's really referring to the many people around him who have lost their lives over the years. Or at a push that Youngboy is perhaps responsible for these killings through either paying assassins to kill for him or simply the fact that these people end up getting killed when they try and beef with him. The idea that Youngboy has seven or more bodies is ambiguous and shrouded in mystery and misdirection. However, when it comes to King Von, the situation is the complete opposite. King Von has rapped repeatedly that he has seven bodies, and in my video, King Von raps first serial killer 
you can quite easily line up King Von's lyrics and tweets with real reported murders in Chicago, along with his own arrest records to make a very compelling case that Von did indeed personally murder at least seven people. Von was a killer and he wanted everyone in the rap industry to know it. And perhaps he was upset what? at the idea that a man much younger and richer and more successful than him could reach the very top of the gangster rap game without demonstrating that he is truly capable of committing murder firsthand. With Von seemingly deciding that the fastest way to the top of the rap game would be to punk Youngboy and expose him as a fake killer, proving to the rap game and the world at large that, that Von man. had he's personally he's committed the murders like he rapped the... about, unlike Youngboy, uh, and therefore uh, Von felt he was more worthy of the top spot than Youngboy. But initially this beef was just petty sneak disses being sent from Von. When Youngboy was released from jail in August 2019, after he got caught up in the Trump Hotel shooting that violated his probation, Von would welcome him home with a snarky tweet that ended calling him ugly. And over the course of the next year, Von would even be seen copying Youngboy's mannerisms and beginning to quote him during his Instagram lives. Boy, as my grandma raised me, you hear me? You know I ain't what up? My grandma raised me. You know I ain't no whether there was any real beef between what? OTF and NBA at the time is unclear, but the two crews were clearly competitive. In October 2019, when DJ Academics would claim that Youngboy was the realest street rapper to appear since the original Chicago drill scene, Dirk would comment on the post proposing that King Von was even realer than Youngboy. Some months later, in February 2020, Von seemed to indicate on Twitter that he and Youngboy had a song together telling Youngboy that he should drop it and stop holding the song so close to his chest. At some point following this, Von would even be seen on an IG Live suggesting that he likes Youngboy and that Youngboy probably has too much going on with his case to reply to him. I probably envy Youngboy too. They just got a lot of shit going on. You just can't be f with nobody when they got all this shit going on. You trying to get rich, they trying to, I don't know. Going, it's unclear exactly where this beef between Von and Youngboy and Quando really started, no one, but mm, two people would seemingly play a No one really knows how the beef even started though. A major role in the feud escalating. Youngboy's ex-girlfriend and the mother to his fourth child, Junia, and King Von's ex-girlfriend, female rapper, Asian Doll. The relationship between Von and Asian would be revealed to the world in an interview with Lil Durk in early 2019. King Von, I was saying he in a relationship too. Yeah. Shout, shout out Asian Doll. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, he go in. Yeah. <laughs> you ever hear it, man? <laughs> Who's you? He looking at you like, come on, man. So to the Disney's. Von appeared to fall deeply in love with Asian Doll. Combine this with his reputation as a prolific killer in the Chicago gang war, and you have a recipe for disaster. Von would tweet saying that he would be willing to beat anyone up who messed with Asian Doll, and he apparently beat a man senseless for calling her a bitch in the studio. Asian ah. reads my hair like this. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody called my girlfriend a bitch yesterday. You ain't gonna smack one of them fuck out his. Tell him what happened to my hand, bro. Most overbeat his. Call my girlfriend. Woke her back up. Fuck I'm looking for a child. That's what I'm saying. That's where you go. Oh, hey, everybody, I'm, I'm doing like y'all for the overdo it. I'm not going to do that shit, man. It's already, already did, man. Pull up already took him. He got blood in there. Blood. Asian would appreciate Von's protection, calling him her bodyguard on Twitter, with Von himself saying that he wishes she wasn't a rapper so that he could keep her at home and protect her, saying that he doesn't trust her around other rappers. But isn't it nice to have somebody in the same industry as you? No, that ain't, I'd rather have. You know, I wish you, you know, I can't say I wish you wasn't a rapper or nothing like that. But it'd be better if I knew that she's at the house instead of going around all these people that I ain't around and damn, I'm, what's going on? Now I'm just thinking, are you damn what the you doing? Why she answer the phone? And that's how she be feeling. She feels the, the same. I just yeah, said that. Exactly. No, yeah, I understand. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like I be... wish my was at the damn house. Yeah. Oh, so you it's the times when you didn't like and she had to work with her. I'm not gonna say nothing, because you know you gotta be but like right. I gotta be, gotta be for sure with business, yourself, yeah. man. I know I'm that so. Von was clearly very possessive about Asian Doll, even tweeting that he would kill somebody for messing with her. However, things would eventually get complicated between Von and Asia, and during the summer of 2020, their relationship appeared to go through an on and off stage, where Von would sometimes indicate on social media that the couple had broken up, while at other times, they seemed to be back together. Von was apparently a single man again, and after his high-profile relationship with fellow industry rapper and social media star Asian Doll, he would be looking to get into a new entanglement 
that might grab some headlines, but his next move would be incredibly bold, and seemingly out of nowhere, Von would make a declaration of war against Youngboy. In mid-August, Von would post a cryptic tweet saying that he had just made a hit song with a female that people won't believe and that it was going to be crazy. That very same day, images would surface online showing Von spending private time with none other than Jania, the mother of Youngboy's fourth child. And later, speculation would begin to swirl off the back of tweets made by Von and his sister Kayla that Von and Jania might have even created a sex tape during their time together. And these rumors would later be strengthened by leaked DMs from an alleged inside source who claimed that Von and Jania had indeed slept together, not recorded music. Rumors that Von would later seemingly what? confirm in the song Rose Gold with PNB Rock where he seems to suggest that somebody's baby mother was bad in bed. However, Jania would deny the rumors, saying that they had in fact just made music together so that she can make money for her son. We walked to Man, you know she lying. Come on now. ...the table to play the little game after my studio session, and I went home. That's it. Y'all trying to make stories out of nothing. I don't f*** that man. Um, like I said, I don't f*** with no... I've been working... We have a song coming out. Y'all wasn't supposed to know, but it is what it is now. We have a song coming out. So when the song come out, y'all go with it. Just know it's hard as you feel me. I'm just trying to get my money to take care of my son, <laughs> period. Her claims would also be supported by leaked DMs, this time from Von, who alleged that he was just trying to make Asian mm. Doll mad and jealous. However, Asian Doll would then challenge Jania's claims, claiming that she had actually seen romantic DMs between Von and Jania. Now I've seen that in them DMs, I've been seeing none of this not a surprise. So all that song Whatever the truth may be, this certainly wasn't the first time what? that Junia had been rumored to have had relations with Youngboy's enemies, as she had previously been connected to both Fredo Bang and Jay Young. Young. Furthermore, leaked DMs from Youngboy's future wife Jazlyn would seem to suggest that Youngboy was still hooking up with Junia while she was running around with Von. Nevertheless, despite Youngboy's relationship with Junia officially being over at this point, he took this rumored hookup between Von and Junia as a very personal attack from Von. And the following day, Youngboy would respond, posting a picture of him and his son holding stacks of cash along with a caption saying that since Von likes to troll so much, he's going to make sure that when his son grows up, he smashes Von's daughter. Now, around the same time, for reasons that are still largely unknown, yeah, right Von's here, childhood yeah. friend and fellow Chirac savage Lil Reese decided to join the beef by tweeting his intentions to beat up young boy's artist Quando Rondo, to which Quando would reply saying that Reese won't do anything. Man, ain't gonna do nothing to me. No academics. Man, you don't deserve to live no more, bit, bro. I hope you on God. <laughs> At this point, seemingly out what? of nowhere, suddenly Youngboy and Quando were beefing with what? Lil Durk, King Von, and Lil Reese, three of the most famous and respected rappers ever to come out of Chicago. War had now been declared, and things were about to escalate. That same day, Youngboy would also go live while playing an unreleased song. This song would later turn out to be the murder anthem, Dead Trolls, with Youngboy addressing Von saying that he wants to see him and saying that he shouldn't come fishing around his lake, which kind of suggests that Von used the pictures with Jania to bait Youngboy into beefing him. In the next lyric, Youngboy makes the wild claim to have seven bodies in his hometown, just like Von was rumored to have seven bodies in Chicago, before then going on to threaten to shoot somebody from out of town as soon as they land and seemingly dissing Jania for messing with his ops for money. Youngboy would also rap that his ops are mad that they can't get a feature from him, perhaps a hint to a potentially uncleared collaboration between the two artists being held back by Youngboy as one of Von's earlier tweets seemed to suggest. And in the song's outro, Youngboy makes an interesting reference to the Chicago basketball legend D. Rose, who had a phenomenal start to his career in his hometown team Chicago Bulls, but later went through difficult times in other cities and teams due to injuries. A possible reference mm. to the fact that Lil Durk and Von had moved out of Chicago to Atlanta at this point in their careers, as well as the fact that they famously were friends with another gang member from Chicago who went by the nickname D. Rose. Now, fans' reaction to this song was mixed, with some arguing that it was dedicated to the numerous other enemies that Youngboy had made in the rap game and the streets over the years, while others would argue that the entire song was all about King Von. Some would even later claim that the song had actually predicted King Von's death, as Youngboy raps about planning on killing someone in Atlanta while also claiming that he will do it after their show where their next one is at. And while that certainly seems far-fetched and more like a creepy coincidence, what isn't a coincidence is the fact that Youngboy decided to drop this snippet right after Von had been seen photographed with the mother of his child. A day later, Von tweets claiming not to have a girlfriend and to be focusing on his career, but it seems that Von 
Von had paid attention to Youngboy, because just a few days after the snippet of Dead Trolls hit the internet, Von would drop a snippet of his own, a track titled Too Real, a song where he raps that he will expose someone and that he's going to kill someone because of a rap beef. About a month later in September, Von would address the beef with Youngboy during an IG Live, saying that he doesn't want beef over insignificant things and with people from other states, but if he gets the feeling that someone doesn't like him, he really doesn't even need a reason to escalate things. That little, little, but everybody, I ain't the tour nobody, you hear me? Tour the people I've been having in the streets, you know what I'm saying? I, I wouldn't be a tour with nobody from all in another town. No reason, like you gotta be a tour with somebody for a reason. Just know we a tour, we a tour gang, okay? Nah, 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 you see what I'm saying? I'm the type I don't gotta know why we into it or nothing. I ain't, you only gotta tell me why you don't like me. Don't even tell me why you don't like me. I don't even care. Just let me know you don't like me. You see what I'm saying? Let me know. Ah, right, you don't like me? That's what it is. Let me know. I'm let, right, let, 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 let me know. But I'm so gangster that I don't need a reason. I don't, it don't gotta be no reason. We can be into it. Like, I don't care. It don't gotta be a reason, for real. I, I'm the two of people, I, it don't got to be no real, I don't know why, I don't care why, but it can be that, you see what I'm saying? Well, I, I like to know why we into it, I like to, I, I need to, because I don't, ain't no goofy, I ain't the and Then I play hard, I play, I ain't trying to lose, I ain't, yeah, I can't lose to nobody, on, oh, lose to who? Who? Who, Lord? Who I'm going to lose to? You've been knowing me, Louis. Like, don't, don't I go hard and think I do? I don't know, Tell him, you, you, you came from. How you get a chain in your neck, Louis? Later in September, after having recently reiterated that he wasn't looking for relationships, but was open for something more casual, Von and his sister Kayla were spotted at a club with Jania again, and with Kayla even posting their mm -hmm. night on social media, calling Jania her sis. This would prompt Asian Doll to respond to the situation between her and Von during an IG Live in October, where she would deny that Von had embarrassed her by messing with Jania, and saying that if Von is single, his actions have nothing to do with her. Nobody embarrassed me, gang. Y'all need to get off my shit. Like, nobody embarrassed me. Nobody. It's nothing nobody did to embarrass me. I was not embarrassed. Y'all was mad about a tweet. Like, y'all, like, dude, don't even know you. F***ing clowns. The f***ing y'all hoes get left for me. Smack the one of you bitches for me. You crazy, bitch. I don't get no f I'm a real bitch at the end of the day. Like I said, you would never see me sweat. You would never see me go outside behind nobody. I don't give who you is. Friend, or anybody. Mind your business when I'm single, like they don't have nothing to do with me. I'm not stressing that, I'm not tweeting about nothing. They don't have to do with me, gang. Nothing. When somebody's single, so what? What they do? I don't give a fuck. That's what y'all problem. However, not much long after, Von would go live with Asian and the two appeared to be on friendly terms. This was a confusing situation, yeah. but perhaps in the words of the great Juicy J, these hoes were for everybody. And in October, King Von would release a song speaking on the situation in the same sentiment. Von would begin to promote his new song called Mine Too, where Von essentially raps, I ain't finna beef about girls with someone, because their girl is mine too. Clearly he's talking about Junior here, and he appeared to throw direct shots at Youngboy on the song too, rapping about having beef in NOLA, or Louisiana, where Youngboy is from, and saying that somebody acts gangster on the mic, but now Von wants to see if he is really gangster in real life. Ironically though, a day after this song came out, Von would also tweet that once someone has slept with his girl, he doesn't want her anymore. Because as it turned out, Youngboy may have given Von a taste of his own medicine by hooking up with Asian Doll around this time. In October 2020, after the rumoured breakup with Von, Asian Doll tweets saying that she only dates killers with three bodies or more. Now, considering the fact that Youngboy had just released his King Von diss song, Dead Trolls, where he rapped that he was responsible for seven murders in his hometown, Youngboy would seemingly meet the three murder requirement to date Asian Doll. And leaked DMs from Youngboy's camp would later seemingly suggest that Asian and Youngboy had indeed hooked up, and Asian Doll would even seem to admit the affair in her song No Exposing. Youngboy's producer would further feed the rumour mill by posting screenshots of messages that Youngboy had allegedly sent him from Asian Doll's Instagram account. Things were getting petty, and now Youngboy was proving that the sentiment behind King Von's song Mine Too was true both ways. But things would only get more and more personal as the days went on. On November the 4th, 2020, 
Only days before King Von would end up losing his life, Youngboy posts a snippet of a new song that he apparently made with Asian Doll, the song with the ominous working title, Meet the Reaper. Von would quickly respond what? by tweeting that the song is trash, and he would continue with an all-day tweet store, during which he would once again allude and joke about a sex tape existing between him and Jania, and claiming that he is actually happy for Asian Doll, but that the song is still trash, before rehashing a lyric from his song Mine 2, once again indicating that Asian is still his girl too. This all went down on November the 4th, 2020, about a day before he would lose his life. Von was incredibly that active on crazy. Twitter this day, and he would continue throwing shots at Youngboy, tweeting that rappers are and that he's not one of them, and he would warn people to approach him with caution, and saying that his ops are acting gangster, but that's not what they're really like, whilst also trying to convince his audience, and perhaps himself, that his feelings weren't hurt and he was simply providing entertainment. With Von eventually saying in another deleted tweet that he's going to lead by example because he's older than Youngboy, and saying that he's huh? quitting the beef because many wars have started over a woman and that he's not beefing Youngboy. He said that they're sharing the same woman and these women don't even matter and aren't all that. And then, in the very last recorded interview before his death, King Von told DJ Academics that there was no real beef between him and Youngboy, saying that they just had the same girl and claiming that things were just being exaggerated by people on the internet. People told me you and young boy was beefing or something like that. Know, they something saying about, that Yo, what happened, Von? What's going on with you, man? They be saying that a lot. It's like we got the same interests. And dear, you know how the internet will try to make it. Don't Shut tell me y'all got problems over girls. No, it's the internet, gang. It's the, it's the, you know, they try to make it like that because it's the internet. You see what I'm saying? Mm. And then, and then you know how females, these females will try to make it like that because they females and they try to make it like one more hard and try to it be just all type but it ain't nothing too serious nothing that you should worry about unfortunately for von things would be very serious indeed. And the very night after that interview, Von himself would escalate things out of his own control and ultimately wound up getting more than he bargained for. Just after midnight on the 5th of November 2020, Von tweets his location for the evening, a show at Atlanta Club Opium. Von would go live on Instagram on the way to the club in good spirits, rapping along to his own music. He would go live pre-show with the name of the club pinned, and he would be seen on Instagram, posted up, smoking hookah with his entourage of O-Block natives. He went on to play that concert at Opium, where he would be seen jamming out on stage at the club. Just after 1am, Von retweeted a Young and Ace lyric with a caption saying his crew are going to catch someone and he sees them as food. While Von is performing at Opium, Rondo Rondo and his entourage are fresh off recording a new music video for a song called The Drop, being seen after that shoot on social media showing off an array of high-powered weapons that they're holding. After finishing his show, Von would be seen leaving Opium in an SUV, and interestingly, the truck can be heard playing the young boy's song, My Window, as it drove away. I see a lot of cars behind him. Key Von! Key Von! Stop playing! For some reason, Von would confuse his team by choosing not to go back to his Airbnb as his security crew originally thought, instead taking a last minute and unexplained detour to the Monaco Hookah Lounge, where Quando Rondo was hanging out with his crew, with Von's manager 100k track telling DJ Vlad that his team were blindsided by the changing plan. He went over there to the after party, and then his driver and his homeboy let us know that we was redirected. We're thinking we're gonna go to the Airbnb or the hotel. At around 3 a.m. that night, Von would find himself outside the Monaco Just Hookah Lounge, that. where according to 100k track- It's just weird. How come he didn't go back to the Airbnb with her? How come he went? How did he, how did he, did he know Kondo was there? Like, track, the team would wait so for almost crazy. 40 minutes in their cars, confused as to why they were there. Von himself seems to have spent that time on Twitter, where he would post his last tweet, ominously mentioning how he murders any beat he gets on. Then, only minutes after this tweet, Von would exit his car and walk across the parking lot, where he would run to Quando Rondo and immediately begun attacking him with heavy punches and no warning, sparking chaos in the large crowd around them. Unfortunately, what Von didn't know was that Quando Rondo's good friend Lil Tim was seemingly ready for the action, and he would quickly approach the two with his gun ready, letting off shots and hitting Von a total of five times. From there, things would quickly escalate. Von's friends from O-Block, Slutty, BJ, and Louie immediately got their guns out and began to return fire to Lil Tim, leaving Tim wounded but alive on the ground, as Slutty's gun appears to jam right when he's standing over Lil Tim about to execute him. While chaos is ensuing all around them, Von is seemingly wrestling with Quando on the ground, perhaps instinctively grabbing onto him whilst holding onto his life, until King Von's friend Muwop approaches the two and separating them by striking Quando once with a large punch. Meanwhile, Von's other friends Slutty, BJ and Louie attempt to flee the scene after taking part in the shootout and almost killing Lil Tim, without realising that they were running directly towards police officers who open fire believing that their lives are in danger too. This killed Slutty and left Louie in critical condition with a headshot wound. 
happened, and BJ was shot in the leg. BJ would actually later comment on the events of that night on social media, questioning if others would have had the courage to shoot someone with police all around them, and saying that the police should have shot him in the head as well. But while the cops are having a shootout with other O-Block members, Muwop and other O-Block associates would drag King Von's limp body to a waiting car, rushing him to hospital. But what's even more crazy is that Quando would also take a wounded Lil Tim to the very same hospital that King Von and his team were at, with Quando going live, showing him trying to help Tim into the hospital and get assistance from the staff. Come on, come on, come on, he's shot! Come on, come on, bit bro, you got it, dog. Come on, cuz I just keep breathing, bit bro. Just keep breathing, cuz. Come on, hold on, you come can't on, move on. on that You thing, got bro. it, my fault, my fault. Yeah. Ma'am, he's shot, what you mean, wrong side? Come on, come on. Come on, man, please, come on, all right. Okay. Get him, get him a wheelchair. Man, what you mean I gotta stay right here? Yeah, okay. Man, we need to get him. Man, we need to get him back to ASAP. I'm calling. 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 i what y'all doing, cuz? Man, what you mean? Man, we can't take the wine, nigga. That man will die. Close friend of Von and Dirk, THF Bezu, later posted saying that they saw Quando at the hospital and that they would have killed him there had he not started recording. Unfortunately, after arriving at the hospital, what? King Von was already in, in critical hospital? condition, and despite medical staff doing everything they could to try and save him, Von would ultimately be pronounced dead at 4.44 in the morning, with the media all around the world waking up to the news and reporting on his death. According to GBI, Bro, rapper- when this shit happened during cold, bro, I was like, it doesn't make, it doesn't make any sense. Bro, we, bro, when he passed, bro, it was, ah, uh, man, I, I thought I was dreaming. King Vaughn and his group were at Opium Nightclub before making their way here to Monaco Hookah Lounge, then to the parking lot where chaos ensued. Believe it or not, this all playing out right in front of two Atlanta police officers. One of them was actually inside his patrol car or next to his patrol car with his blue lights on. APD responding, attempting to stop the shooting, but it was too late. It hit like the one officer that did respond. He tried to protect himself and stop what was going on. The investigation on this shootout will continue. No officers were injured during this incident. According to GBI, this is the 82nd officer involved shooting that they've been requested to investigate in 2020. Lil Durk would seemingly find out about the shooting whilst being on IG Live and listening to his own revenge anthem back in blood, with the live ending abruptly when he realized that all of the comments were full of people asking about Von shooting. After the news of Von's passing would be properly confirmed, Dirk would post a tribute image of Von to his own Instagram, saying that he had lost his twin. Meanwhile, Asian Doll, who despite perhaps not being on the best of terms with Von at the time of his death, reacted to the news on Twitter, claiming that she wishes that she was dead. However, over in Baton Rouge, Youngboy's brother Big B appeared to be in good spirits, as he would mock Von in an IG story, saying that it was funny that Von was the one who started the beef, dissing NBA Youngboy, now he's the one dead. The joke's on you, you diss, now you're getting wrapped down. Yeah. Uh yeah. Meanwhile, one of Youngboy's biggest ops, Lit Yoshi, who was still on probation in Florida at this point, would pay tributes to Von in a vlog. Long little King Von, man, I f my old block boys. Right, right. Von's friends and associates would naturally have a strong response to his death, seemingly taking it as a full declaration of war between them and the NBA camp. 600 Breezy claimed to be headed from Chicago to Youngboy's at 150 miles an hour with the Steppers. BJ, who was still probably being treated for his leg shot wound, would also respond, saying that their ops are now cursed and that they don't stand a chance against O-Block. Meanwhile, Youngboy affiliate Michi downplayed these declarations of war, saying that real gangsters only slide in silence. Right the whole ain't doing no hell, scary, doing all that cap and get on that, I don't let my real don't speak. Hey, if you go do something, man, do something, you don't come to the city and annihilate you in the city, man, you were supposed to slab out that man. In a bittersweet turn of events, just a few days after Von's passing, his album, Welcome to O-Block, would become his highest charting project ever, debuting posthumously at the unlucky number 13 on Billboard, ironically, 
one position above Youngboy's top album, which at that point had already spent eight weeks on the charts after going number one on debut. What should have been a major career it's victory crazy. for Von was now unfortunately the final chapter in his short but impactful career as a gangster rapper. However, sadly for Youngboy, this wouldn't be the end of the beef. In fact, it was only the beginning. Because despite Von being the one who provoked both Youngboy first by taking intimate pictures with the mother of his child and Kwondo by punching him for no reason outside the Monaco club, the unintended result was Von being shot dead in front of his entire crew. And unfortunately for Youngboy, Von wasn't just any rapper. Von was, in his own words, the most dangerous killer to ever emerge from Oblock. And Von was backed up by an army of friends, gang members, and killers who seemingly wanted nothing more than to slide for Von and get revenge. And they would be targeting Quando Rondo and Youngboy as well as all of their friends. But the biggest threat would come in the form of Von's closest friend and mentor, Lil Durk, who just so happened to be the biggest rapper coming out of Chicago in a decade. With seemingly the power of the music industry, millions of dollars, and all of Chicago's Black Disciple gang members behind him. When hey man, we're gonna end this. Oh man, this is a good one. We're going to go ahead and end this part six right here. Um, there will be eight parts. So part seven, part seven um, is will be uh, Monday. No, Tuesday. I don't know when it will be out. Y'all see. But this video right here is part six. I just got share is getting good. We're almost at the end. We're going to have eight parts. So the uh, eight part, the part eight is going to be a finale. So like subscribe and everything, man. I will see you guys in part seven. Peace.